how to make a tea lud biochar reactor in less than an hour. Let's unlock a 7,000 year old Amazonian carbon sequestration secret. Whether you call it Terra Preta, Amazonian Dark Earth, Indian Black Earth, or biochar, the results speak for themselves. Explosive biodiversity of microbial, bacterial, and fungal colonies thrive and promote healthy soil that retain moisture during dry times and make otherwise untouched nutrients bioavailable for the plant roots that desperately need them to thrive. Hey YouTube, this is Doug Green Cabby and today we're going to be making a biochar burned barrel. It's going to be called a tea lud. Uh, what we're going to need is we're going to need three barrels. We're going to need two 55 gallon metal drums and one 30 gallon metal drum. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill holes in the bottom of this one. We're going to go ahead and cut this one off so that it can sit on top and have a little bit of airflow in the top. And then this one here is going to go on top of the barrel and uh, this is going to be the chimney or the smokestack, i.e. the afterburner. Um, and basically it's called a T-LUD, T-L-U-D, top lit. All right, and then up draft. And what it's going to do is it's gonna make our biochar uh, so that we can use it for organic gardening. Barrels you can pick up really, really cheap. You can usually find them on Craigslist for free or you know for about 20 bucks. You can actually get into biochar and start doing some amazing things with organic gardening and just making explosions of bacterial, microbial, uh, and fungal life in your soil to uh, just exponentially increase uh, your bounty. So let's go ahead and get into it. The only tools you're going to need is going to be a sawzall uh, with a metal blade. Uh, right here we're using a uh, TPI 18. Uh, you're also going to need a grinder to grind off the edges. Uh, and you're going to need a drill with a half inch drill bit. You know, or a little bit smaller than that so that you can make the holes in the bottom of the barrel. And uh, make sure that you have some batteries. We're going to go ahead and drill uh, holes in the bottom of our burn barrel. Um, now, if you watch other videos, they show you how to draw line and make them in perfect spots but you really don't need that. Just go ahead and drill on our holes. Now what you want to make sure that you do is in between holes you want to go ahead and dip your drill bit in water so that it doesn't get super hot. Dull the drill bit out and break. Dip your bit in water and keep going. We'll show you when we're done. Took me about 10 minutes to drill. Uh, we got all of our holes in there and that's pretty much how it should look. Drill bit is still intact. Had a little bit of wear on it, but uh, after drilling all the way through all these holes in the thing, I think it did really well. Uh, on the bottom, uh, you wanna have a vent hole on all four sides. So across from each other. And that's gonna be about three quarters of an inch. All right, so we have it on all four sides, and that gives you just enough oxygen uh, to get the flames going from the holes on the bottom and on the side to go ahead and get your burn for the biochar. Uh, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut down our barrel. We got our barrel cut. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and cut a flap in the top to go ahead and put on uh, the 30 gallon and then we're going to cut a flare on the top of that and that's going to be our afterburner chimney. Now we're going to cut uh, the vent holes in the top. So this is a wax crayon, you can use a magic marker or whatever. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw a line around to see where we need to make sure our vent holes don't open up to. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and draw a line around. So we have our circle here that says, hey, this is we need to make sure we don't go this far because that's going to be the circumference of the barrel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, draw a line here. So this is going to be our cut line. Okay, so we have our circle here that says, hey, this is, we need to make sure we don't go this far because that's going to be the circumference of the barrel.
got all of our sections cut and as you see we stayed about an inch away uh, from the edge of the line uh, so that it can go ahead and grip on the barrel and not give too much oxygen. Now what we're going to do is take some pliers and peel these up. Now in this one here, it already has a pre-existing ring, so we're not gonna draw a circle. We're gonna go ahead and make our cuts here and keep it uh, in the center. And we're gonna go ahead and test the burn to see uh, if it has enough oxygen to go ahead and burn the stuff off without getting too much oxygen to release lots and lots of smoke. We wanna keep the smoke to a minimum. Our project's gonna take about two and a half cutting wheels, the metal cutting wheels to go ahead and get through your project. And it's gonna take about two and a half batteries worth of juice. When you set up your barrel, first things first, you wanna go ahead and put something under the bottom. Uh, we went ahead and put two metal bars that have holes in it so that it's going to allow a little bit of airflow, but not ton. You can use bricks, rocks, whatever you wanna do. And uh, this is going to allow the updraft uh, to go ahead and start charring your wood chips, uh, wood pieces, or big chunks of wood. We're gonna go ahead and fill it with wood chips. We'll put on the afterburner after we light it. The thing about this is you can get rid of all your waste woods, branches, twigs, roots, wood chips. You can have local tree companies drop off their wood chips. Uh, they will gladly drop them off for free and you can get tons and tons of wood waste. Uh, they'll also drop off uh, logs, branches, limbs, uh, whatever you desire. And uh, so the great thing is, is you can turn that into biochar for amazing biodiversity in your soil. Okay, we're almost done filling it up. We're going to fill it up all the way to the top and then put a small fire on top so that we can go ahead and burn it down. All right, so we've got it completely full. We've got our little tinder pile set up on top so that we can set a fire. And then what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we have a bucket of water just in case this gets out of hand and you need to have safety to be able to put it out. Also, you want to have your water source ready because once this uh, completely gets done with the burn, you're going to want to douse it with water and then spray it down once you dump the coals uh, to make sure that it stops the cooking process so that you have charcoal and not just ash. going to do is we're going to go ahead and let our tinder pile burn for a couple minutes. We'll take a rake and we'll go ahead and rake it over the top and then go ahead and put our tops on so that it can continue the process. Uh, we went ahead and put two bars underneath so that there can be enough airflow to get down there and it's even airflow all the way around. And as you see, it's burning really clean, just a little bit of smoke, but not much. Okay, we've done about 40 minutes of burn. We're getting a lot of smoke here, so we're gonna go ahead and check it and see if it's done. Uh, we did the water test when you throw it up on the side. Uh, and basically, you see where it evaporates instantly. So it's on the side and it's hot and it evaporates, so we're gonna go ahead and check it because we don't see any more flames in there. Make sure that you spray it down real well so that you completely douse it. Make sure that the fire goes out. And this is what you're lo uh, looking for when you're done. You can hear it as it crumbles. It's wonderful, beautiful charcoal. Alright, here's our contents here, and you see we have wonderful, beautiful biochar. The great thing is, is it uh, sounds like uh, the clinking. Uh, this is actually uh, wet here because I just wet it down so I wouldn't burn my hands. Uh, but wonderful, beautiful charcoal. 
just comes right apart. And this is acres and acres of surface area. So you can go ahead and inoculate this with uh, compost tea, worm castings, put a little bit of flour in there. You could even urinate on it, but uh, basically what you want to do is you want to get all the microbes, the bacteria, and the fungi in here and all the little pieces of the holes in the surface area so that you can go ahead and, you know, skyrocket the growth and just enrich your soil so much. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please give us a big black thumbs up. Uh, if so, please favorite, please like, please tweet, please pin, and make sure that you share this information so that everyone can have a wonderful, wonderful organic garden. Thanks for joining us today. Subscribe for more videos on organic gardening and green build projects. Check out our organic gardening playlist, our Never Leak Rain Barrel, or our Chicken Coop Mansion for $50 or less.